Hey, welcome. Hello, hello. I'm just getting set up here. Trying to get another device going so I can see your comments easier. Uh, because this angle is weird, but I wanted to be able to show you the craft, so um, I'll be looking up a lot. Huh? Welcome. Hello. Hi, welcome. Um, I'm Bertie Larson with Redbird Design, and uh, uh, we make home decor. And we um, do custom orders. If you are looking for something for your home that you're just having a hard time finding, give us a call. We'd love to chat with you to see if we can't make your dream a reality. Uh, we also have started crafting classes. So, um, you know, we, we schedule a couple a month where we have a group of people gather for a couple of hours and do some hands on creative. Uh, therapy for a couple hours and we um, you know visit and just have a great time so if you're interested in a crafting class check out our events page for some uh, scheduled uh, classes coming up um, so yeah I'm just waiting to see if this pops up on my other device so I can see your comments Waiting to see myself. Hi, welcome. Happy Saturday. Uh, hi, Jenna, thanks for joining. There we go. Let's see if I can turn my comments on so I can see those. Um, so yeah, today we're gonna create this uh, this bunny, super cute bunny crate. And um, the inspiration to create this project um, came from some comments and questions I had at some past crafting classes. Uh, some of them were, where do I get my supplies? Um, how do I find my stuff? Do I have to wait till I go out of town? Do I order it online? And I do do a lot of shopping when I go out of town and you know, there are some things I do order online, but it got to, got me thinking that there should be a way or should be some stuff we can create with, uh, you know, shopping locally. Uh, hi, Sam. Uh, and so, I went and I, I kind of just walked around town at some different shops and, and was looking at things, um, trying to put a new perspective on it and not be so negative. You know, I, we always complain what we don't have, but uh, forget what we do have. And so I took my rose-colored Hobby Lobby glasses off and I just went out and, you know, was looking around and seeing what inspired me. So here we are. Hi, Stacy. Um, so yeah, we are going to create this and everything that was used to create this, I found here in town. So, um, you know, this works in any rural location, I suppose, that we get to, uh, you know, have to work a little bit to find some stuff to be creative with. Uh, if you are watching and you have a Hobby Lobby or a Michaels or a Joann's, um, by all means, go to those stores and get these supplies. This will all be found there too, but. Okay, so uh, let's get into where you can find the stuff to make this. So I'm gonna set this over here. And this is the crate that I'm using, and I found this at Shopco in the clearance section uh, in the back, and it is a Thanksgiving crate. And we're just gonna paint the ends so you won't even be able to tell it's Thanksgiving. Um, but this was on clearance for $2.99. They also had a larger one there. I wanna say it was $5.99, but I, I wasn't paying too much attention to the bigger one. The, this craft would, would work with that bigger crate as well. So, and they had quite a few there, so. Shopco, $2.99. 
Um, and then you're going to need paint, and I just used white, but you can use any color you want. Uh, two ounce paint, you can find that at Ace Hardware or Markle's. Um, and they actually do have quite a good variety of the little two ounce bottles. They're $3.49 a bottle, um, and I will uh, put a picture of the different colors that they have available after the video in the comments. Um, remember, if you don't see a shade that you like, you can always mix them. So, uh, you know, if you wanted a pink, you could buy a white and a uh, red and, and get your own shade there. Um, they also have, if you're looking for a very specific color to match your home decor, you can get their little sampler containers. So, that's the light is going to bounce off that, but these are 15 ounce little containers that they will mix for you from any color in their paint chips. So, um, this is a great deal. It's a lot of paint, 15 ounces, but you could use it for other items, especially if you're trying to tie some different items together. You can use it to paint some frames um, and other things like that. So this is a great deal. These are $4.99 uh, at Aces. Um, and then you're going to need paint brushes. Um, I'm gonna use just the black uh, one inch sponge and these are 89 cents at Aces. And then you have the one inch chip brush that I'll use today. And these were $1.59 at Aces. Uh, they also had a three pack of artist brushes. So some different sizes similar to like this um, and some different shapes. Those were $4.99. Um, if you have your own brushes, you obviously don't need to go buy them, but um, those are available there, which surprised me they had artist brushes. So that was cool. Um, you're gonna also need fabric, which you can get at Crazy Woman Quilts, and they have a ton of fabric there. Uh, they have pre-cut fat quarters for $3.29, um, but they can cut anything off the bolt for you. Uh, I used three different kinds. The sun is really bad there. But you could just use the same color, uh, even just two colors. The fat quarter is going to be more than what you need for this project, so if you wanted to go in on a friend with those, you could do that. Um, but yeah, you'll need fabric, so that's the other thing you can get locally. And then things that you just might have is um, a glue gun. Although if you don't have a glue gun, Aces carries those too, and they have a really small one like this for $4.99, and then a couple bigger ones with different options ranging from $8.99 and up. Um, you're gonna need, um, not necessarily need, but it's helpful to have a ruler, um, masking tape, a pencil, a paint tray, and you can just use a paper plate that you can throw away when you're done, easy cleanup, and maybe some uh, rags or paper towels. So that's all you need. And you can find it all locally, so that is awesome. Um, okay, so let's get started. The first thing that um, I did with this crate was paint these edges. Um, you could paint them white or you could try, it's, it is really just a sticker and I was too impatient to try and uh, scrape off that sticker, so I'm just gonna paint over it. Um, I am going to use some masking tape to tape off um, the jute handle. You could even probably unknot that and take it off completely if you wanted to, but we'll just do it this way. So I've already got one side done and then I'll just throw some tape. It doesn't have to be perfect um, and it doesn't have to cover the entire thing, just kind of around where we're gonna paint. grab my white and dump out some white paint. And I'm gonna just use the sponge brush for this. The key here is to just do light coats. Um, the lighter the coat, the faster it will dry so that you can uh, do this project fairly quickly. The heavier the coat, um, 
you might get away with only doing maybe two coats, but it's gonna take longer to dry and we wanna get it done and up in our house, right? So, um, <laughs> thanks, Stacy. But you have to make it yourself, that was the point. <laughs> Uh, all right, so I'm just throwing a light coat on this real fast here. And I'm really going light just over the wood. I want it to look a little bit rustic and old, so just Again, light coats really helps achieve that, and plus it will dry a lot faster. So, nice white coat on that side. I'm gonna flip it over. People possibly also want to put something down on your table before you start. I did not. That's okay. All right. You can still see, I know it's hard to see in the video, but you can still see the, wor the wording through that first coat. Like I said, it takes about three coats. And then we can use some sandpaper to rough it up a little bit and uh, make it look old. Uh, in my previous example, I didn't paint the sides, but um, that might look good too if you wanted to do that. Um, you can, remember, with this one, I'm gonna hang it by this. So in reality, you really aren't gonna see the top and bottom, uh, depending on how you do your craft. If you, you customize it, uh, you might not see that. So having that painted on the top might not matter either. So, or the bottom, I mean. All right, so that's drawing. Uh, the next thing we're gonna do is um, take our template, our bunny template. What I like about this project is it's so easy to customize. You can literally do anything. If you don't want to do an Easter theme, you could do a, um, an initial. You could put um, an S in here. You could do an L for your last name or uh, a different shape. You could put a mixer. I've seen mixers, you know, with the shape of a mixer in here would be super cute. Um, you could do Hi, Shelly. Hi, Jan. Thanks for joining. Um, you could do, um, well, the bunny. I have just printed out a bunny. You could do an Easter egg in here, which would be super cute, where you maybe then just fill it all with flowers. So you could do the, um, you know, a, a color of blue flowers and then a stripe of yellow and a stripe of pink would be super cute um, with an Easter egg. You could do a horse's head and have the mane have the flowers on there. So a lot of different options and all you have to do is go to the internet and Google the image you want and do, you know, horse's head silhouette clip art and then print it out. Um, or you can hand draw a shape in there too. So, but in this example, we are doing the bunny and um, I already have it pre-cut out. So you would print it out and cut it out or hand draw it. So I have my little bunny already pre-cut and we're just gonna lay it in our crate and um, eyeball it to center it. And I'm gonna grab my pencil and then I'm gonna just lightly trace around it. Um, because we're using white, you wanna make, if you use white in your uh, tray, you wanna make sure to draw lightly because it's hard to cover up pencil marks with uh, white paint, I found out. Um, anyway, so we're gonna get our bunny in there and if your bunny's moving around or your template's moving around, you can tape it down while you trace it. Uh, so uh, we will just lightly trace around that real quick. And some of your bunny is gonna fall off into the open slats and that's okay. Or your shape, other shape might. As long as the majority of your shape is on the wood, you're good. Okay, 
So I'm sure this is going to be super hard for you guys to see, but I do have a bunny shape in there. Okay. So now I'm going to grab my white and I'm going to use the sponge brush again. Get a little bit more white paint out there. And I'm going to start by outlining the bunny. And when you're painting the bunny, if you want a rustic look where um, it looks um, old and worn, like, pull up my, my, this one here. So you can see here on the edges, it looks a little worn, the paint's worn off, um, kind of chippy. Uh, to get that look, you use really, really light coats. It's called dry brushing. And so we're gonna really just put a really light coat on and then we'll come back and layer more on where we want it and how we want it to look. If you want it to be a solid white, you don't have to do the dry brush technique, just start painting it on there. Okay, so I'm gonna grab some paint on my brush really lightly and then, um, it's gonna be really hard to see, but wherever I see my lines, I'm gonna just start brushing away from them with my uh, black sponge brush. So you can see how around my outline is pretty solid and then I just lightly brush away from that so that I can get that worn look. So I picked this tray up yesterday, last night actually, and at Shopco, and they had, gosh, they probably had 10 or 15 of these small trays, and then they had probably that same amount in the larger size, so um, plenty there for you guys to go pick those up and, and create this yourself. So I'm just outlining the bunny to start with, brushing away from the lines. And for those of you who might have missed the beginning, if you share this video, um, we will be drawing names from all who shared to um, send out a little happy mail just to show that we appreciate you guys sharing the video. And we appreciate you guys watching. Okay. And I want mine to look rustic and so, you know, I'm not so concerned, too concerned about, you know, being so detail oriented on my bunny outline. I'm okay with it looking a little bit off, I guess. Okay, so my bunny outline's done. And so now I am going to, on the boards where the bunny is, I'm just gonna just kind of, I'm not dipping my brush in the paint anymore. It has enough on there, but using a little bit of pressure, I'm just gonna, um, get those other areas painted in using that dry brush technique. So this is considered dry brushing it because I haven't dipped my brush in the paint. Um, there's still a lot of paint in there that I can use. You can also tape off the inside uh, edges of the crate if you want, if you didn't want you know those to be painted or you can paint those as well. So you can see uh, where I just kind of dry brushed out those areas. So we can do crafts in rural Montana <laughs> without a Hobby Lobby. Okay, um, so that looks okay to me. 
And like I said, just keep layering it on. Uh, just little dabs of paint, getting in the areas that you want uh, to layer more on. You can always add more. You can't really take it off. You can sand it off, but that's a little too much work for me. So, um, so I'm going to put that away and then show you with this brush um, how it looks when you use the dry, pr dry brush technique. So I'm going to dip my paint or dip my brush in the paint and then um, I'm not sure if you can see that but there's like globs of paint on there which if I started painting this now um, would deposit that glob right there and it would look not naturally worn so I'm gonna actually take this and just dab that off and that kind of helps distribute the paint through the brush a little bit so that it doesn't glob on when I when I brush it on again if you just want a solid white background you don't have to do any of these steps, just paint on there as you want. So, so if you can see, I'll start over here. So I'm gonna just start at the top and I'm just gonna lightly drag my brush down and I'm gonna keep doing that until um, I don't see any more paint come off my brush. And then I'm gonna do it just a little bit longer because that helps uh, get that paint kind of filled in those cracks a little bit and makes it, um, Oh, what's the word I'm looking for? I lost my word. Um, oh, it'll come to me. I'm gonna keep going on. <laughs> um, so again, dab your brush, uh, wipe it off, and then just drag lightly over your boards. And so you can continue doing this, layering it on. do the other side and again if you want to tape off the inside of your box um, you know go ahead if you get a little paint on the edge where you didn't mean to you can always just grab a little bit of a sand, a little piece of sandpaper and sand it right off it comes right off these boxes I wasn't very neat in my first attempt and so I had to do a little bit of sanding but in reality when you're hanging this like this you're not gonna see this, you might, but nobody else would see the edges or the bottom. Um, and so you can see how that's starting to look. Now around the bunny, you can kind of see where it's looking a little clumpy. You can go back in there with your brush and do some little stippling and pull it out a little bit. Um, you can add more to the edges. Make them a little more white. So this is the fun part that you get to just kind of play around with this paint until it gets, you know, to the consistency you want, the worn look that you want. So because this is so solid here, I'm gonna add just some more solid white paint so it looks like it's kind of fading away from the bunny a little bit more. Just play around with that until it, it looks um, good to you. Add more, make it solid if you want, use a different color. Um, any color would look great there. I could probably sit and play with this for quite a while, so I better just call it good. <laughs> okay, now that the bunny's outlined and our, our base is on, I'm gonna go back and add a second coat to the ends real quick so that um, while we're making our flowers, that dries. So let me grab a little bit more paint here. And my brush. And adding paint to the sides would look really cute. Um, you know, with this crate being hung like this, well, not like this, some little eggs on this little shelf would look cute. A little vase maybe 
little figurine. So yeah, Shopco is closing at a few places in Montana and I really hope they don't close here as much as I like to curse them sometimes. It is kind of nice to have. Okay, paint my other side here real quick. starting to disappear. I can't even tell it was a Thanksgiving uh, basket. Hey, Fallon. Oh, I'm so glad you're here. <laughs> uh, all right, so we're going to let that dry and then we're going to make our flowers. So let me show you what those look like again. So they're just a rolled uh, felt or not felt. We're not using felt fabric flower and super easy to make and super easy to change the sizes. So if you wanted to do three and then maybe in, in this, up in here, you could do two small ones and maybe down here two small ones. If you had green fabric, you could cut a couple leaves out. That would be cute too. So Val, we're making this. Um, okay, so my fabric, I chose a yellow, uh, minty turquoisey and a pink and let me put this down here for now so we're going to start by uh, creating some strips and uh, we're going to just rip it actually it's a lot easier than trying to cut it and so i'm going to grab my ruler you really don't need a ruler you can eyeball it they can be different they don't have to be the same um, but i'll use my ruler here and I'm going to cut one and a half inch strips. So we've got uh, one and a half and then I'm just gonna do a little slit right at the top there. And from that slit, then you can just rip it down. And it will make a one and a half inch strip exactly. So that rip method is awesome. Plus, um, and don't be uh, concerned about the frayed edges, they look great on the flower. So. Um, you don't have to go and trim off any of that. So I've got one strip here. Let me cut my others. And I will measure out, kind of eyeball one and a half inches, make a little slit, and then rip it. There's two and one more. So um, this would be super cute with the bunny all filled in with flowers too. Where do I wanna cut that? Um, instead of just three at the top, you could fill, um, you could, you know, if you're buying a fat quarter, you would have enough fabric to make enough rolled roses to fill the whole bunny in, that would be cute. Or you could do the reverse. And instead of painting the background, have it all be flowers with the wood bunny. Oh, that would be really cute too. Um, you could do that with an initial. You could fill in the entire initial with um, flowers. Okay. So I got my three strips, one and a half inches. Um, and it doesn't matter how long they are. Uh, if you're getting a fat quarter from uh, the quilt store, they will be pretty long and the flower is as big as you want it to be. So um, we will roll until it looks good and then we'll just cut it off and whatever we have left, we can use to roll the next flower. Um, so the first thing we wanna do is create a base to glue to. So I'm gonna cut just a little square of this off to glue my flower to when I'm done rolling it. So we're gonna fold our flower in half, or our strip of fabric in half. And see if I can get up there. And then to start with, we're gonna fold it one more time. 
So we have two folds on the end, so it's um, a little shorter. And then we're gonna roll it probably like six times. So we're just gonna roll it around itself. Two, three, so you can see I'm starting to roll that. Light's not very good. Four, five, six. So here I have the center of my flower. See if I can find the spot that's the best for lighting. There we go. So that's my center. And as you roll, your, um, you don't have to worry about trying to pin this down to stay folded at the end. It will stay folded as we roll it. So now I'm gonna hold this in this hand with the center in between my thumb and finger. And I'm gonna grab this uh, tail with it folded and I'm gonna start rolling it around my center. But as I roll it, you wanna twist it and then turn and twist. That twist in the roll makes it look like a petal's going around the edge of the, the rose, I guess. So twist it and turn it around your finger there. Twist it and turn it around. And so it's not the best, my lighting's terrible. Um, but where it twists, it looks like it's going down inside the flower so you get that petal look. Um, and you don't wanna to twist too tight because then your petals will look small and um, it just won't look right. And you can go a little looser and your petals just will look bigger. Um, so looser is okay, just don't go too tight. And you don't have to be concerned about twisting it every time you wrap. It's You kind of wanna watch, I know it's hard to see, but um, where you have a wrap, uh, you wanna try and put a wrap in another section. So as the rose gets bigger, you can kind of just look at it, say, okay, I need another twist there, or I don't need a twist there. And so we're gonna just keep twisting and rolling around that base. Okay, so that is about the size I want. And let's see if I can get a different, there we go, that helps a little bit. So there is your rolled flower. Once I'm done with this little tail, you can continue going. Like I said, you just roll until the size that you want and then we'll cut the tail off wherever it is. Um, that's about the size I want. And what I'm gonna do is I'm going to, this is the front, I'm gonna tuck my tail under just a little bit there. And then I'm gonna grab my glue gun and I'm going to put a circle of glue on my base and then place my rose right on top of that and kind of just give it a little bit of a, a push down and get that glue kind of everywhere there. And so, again, that's terrible. I don't know if this will help putting it on the white. There we go. Um, and then once it's dry, we're just gonna go around and trim off the base from the back. At this point, if you see any bits that weren't glued to the base if it if you didn't get enough glue or whatever or it just kind of smushed to one side and not the other you can um, just peel it back and stick some glue in there all right there is the flower Get my... okay so that's one um super easy to make and uh, super fun, kind of relaxing. Something to do while you watch TV is just sit and roll flowers. Um, all right, so let's do that again. We've got one fold to start and then fold again. There we go. And then we're gonna roll it about six times to start our center. Three, four, five, six. And those first six rolls, you don't twist. You just roll it and get that center started so you have something to hold on to while you're rolling it around. All right, so now we've got this tail and we're gonna twist it and then roll it around. And then we're gonna twist it 
and roll. And we're just gonna keep doing that until we get to the size that we want. And as it gets bigger, it gets a little bit easier to hold so that you can kind of just look at it and see how it's shaping. So um, you can unroll it and, and kind of retwist it if it needs to be. Okay. There we go. So I'm gonna make my, this one just a little bit smaller and I forgot to cut my base. So I'll cut a little base off of that tail there real quick. Something to glue to. So cut your base and then start rolling. And then once you get to the size that you want, um, you wanna tuck your tail just a little bit behind the flower. Throw some glue on your base a little circle of glue and and press your flower onto that you don't necessarily need a hot glue gun you could use um, like this stuff this tacky glue you could use that you could use Elmer's glue um, you could use maybe this quick dry adhesive I I want to say I saw this at Shopco I didn't look for just regular glue there but I bet Aces or Shopco carries one of those two and the fabric store might even carry that tacky glue, maybe. Um, it would just take a little longer to make the flowers because they would, you would have to hold it while it dried for a little bit longer. That's why I like using the hot glue gun is because it's dry instantly almost. Okay, so then we trim the base around the flower. Let's see if I can show you what this one looks like. There we go. Flower two. So we'll make one more. Fold in half. Fold in half again. And just roll six times to start that center. Two, three, four, five, six. Okay. And then at this point, we hold it between um, our finger and our thumb. And we just roll around that, twisting it as we go. And just look at it and see where your twists are and if it looks like good petals. You could also, if you're having a hard time holding it while you're building it, and especially if you're building bigger flowers, you know, sizes like this, if you are filling in um, around the uh, bunny and you want to, you know, do some bigger ones and medium size, you can add a little dab of glue while you're twisting it to kind of help hold that flower together because as they get bigger they do get harder to hold um, so you could do that okay let's see just a couple more twists and again i forgot to cut my base <laughs> I'm gonna tuck my tail underneath the rose a little bit, add my glue. And smush my flower down on there. So there we go. You can kind of see it with it on its base and the tail still sticking out, and so now we can cut that out. All right, so we've got the three flowers, and now we can glue them on our bunny. So you can place these wherever you want. Um, 
like I said, I think it would be super cute to just continually make, uh, you know, get the fat quarters from the quilt store and just make a bunch of these and fill in the entire bunny with roses or on the outside, don't paint and just fill in the um, outer edges of roses. That would be cute too. So springy. Um, but once you get your flowers where you want them, then I just put a little dab of glue on the back and press them in. If you have a flower that is going to span between the two uh, slats there, make sure not to put glue where that slat or the gap is gonna be. There you'll have glue drying out the back. There we go. See, how cute is that? Um, and at this point then I'd probably um, paint another coat on the top and bottom just because I still can kind of see the words there um, but then we can come in with a, a piece of sandpaper and sand the edges and it would um, kind of distress it just a little bit um, but not show but don't sand too hard that you start seeing the words again if you do just repaint it and start over um, if you're not happy with some of maybe your brush strokes in here, um, you could just come in here and sand it a little bit to kind of uh, blend that in. Blend, that was the word I was looking for earlier, blending. Um, so yeah, sandpaper to maybe brush out some of those brush strokes so it looks a little more naturally worn. But that's it, that's our craft today. Again, you can buy everything to make this locally. You don't need a Hobby Lobby to buy this. Uh, the crates at Shopco for $2.99, it's the small size. They do have a larger size for I believe $5.99. Paint is at Ace Hardware. They have the two gallon, two ounce, two gallon, two ounce jugs for, what was it, $3.59. The brushes uh, are at Aces, um, and then the fabric, Crazy Women Quilts. So there you go. Something fun to do on this cold day to get ready for spring, right? Thanks for watching, you guys. Thanks um, for being here. You guys all have a great day.